What's up, people? What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to today's Art Talk. Just getting everything situated. I'm a little blown out here. My face is not blown. Well, it is. The light. Uh, but uh, got a lot of stuff going on today. Uh, very excited about some of the things that have already started with this this epic week. Wow. Uh, insane stuff. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Uh, Rick Calgar, good morning. Welcome to the the uh, art studio where we get shit done. Right there. Craig Casey, good to see you, man. What's going on, everybody? Uh, looking pretty good. What's up, Pete? We missed you at uh, Muscles and Mojo. I know it's a long drive for you, but uh, good to see you. Loretta, Doug, what's up, Dougie? Good to see you. Um, well, I don't get to see you, technically. You can see this ugly mug, but um, uh, you may see this. Um, I got uh, bit by a spider on my pillow the other night. I, I don't think it was small because um, my face blew up and my eyes blew up and and uh, it, it let me have it. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, I live in a zoo. You know, what can I say? Uh, our house is filled with all kinds of creatures that uh, make their way around. I've been stung by a scorpion um, in the shin. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Uh, been busy remodeling my kitchen, sir. Way to go, Rick. That's what we do. When COVID happens, screw COVID, man. Uh, rebuild something. Make something happen. Uh, everybody, welcome to today's Art Talk. Um, uh, well, Sammy wants to leave. Hold on a second. Get out of here, kid. She doesn't want to go until it's until the show starts. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, hi, Pat. Good morning. Uh, a lot of stuff. So let's get into uh, today's subject, how to choose to create the best effect as an artist. Um, uh, not too uh, detailed on that, that title, but we're going to get into you know choosing to create the best effect uh, and understanding how to get the best effect. We have to understand the cause, and we're going to get into that, which I'm kind of excited about. But this is Art Talk. I am Fireball, uh, your um, your humble host, and uh, thank you for watching today. We've been doing this for quite some time. We've probably done several hundred episodes of Art Talk at this point. What's up, Josh? Tommy Scalera. Good to see you, man. we got some good people. Uh, sorry, Miss Muscles Emoji. Oh, for shame. Tisk tisk. That's why we have another one next month. That's okay. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Um, but... Um, uh, our talk is specifically designed to help you guys uh, be creatively powerful in your worlds, whatever your worlds may be. Uh, we are creative beings, and that's what we do. People like Steve Gelman, who just rolled in, uh, drove his Porsche over to uh, Muscles and Mojo. Uh, he's got an event coming up, too. It's pretty cool. Um, hold on. What's to be in your... Uh, uh, Tremaine, good to see you. Uh, I'm going to be talking about you shortly, uh, in a moment. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, let's get to some of the updates here from Fireball Publishing because we got some shit going on and it just keeps rolling in and, and it's it's all good. Uh, good morning, Valerie. Uh, Vlog 1001 is up. You guys can see that. Uh, we went to the Buellton Vintage Trailer Show, saw some spectacular trailers, uh, but we have to do it uh, uh, the episodes as multi-part because there's just way too much. So uh, episode 1001, uh, we actually have 1001 episodes of the log. Sorry I'm kind of blown out, but uh, th there's a tent outside that's blasting my face at the moment. Uh, Kathy's got some new stuff on the Etsy store, the Fireball Etsy store for Christmas, so you guys can check out some of that stuff, which is pretty fun. But we are here in the, the glorious Fireball pad uh, at Fireball Publishing, uh, where we get shit done. That's our job, and to help you guys be creatively powerful in your worlds. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what your background is. Um, the more that we cultivate uh, the present moment and the, the things that we love to do, the more we get some amazing stuff happening. Uh, Craig Casey, big show for uh, Caneo Valley Cars and Coffee this Saturday at Westlake Autoscape. Check it out if you got nothing to do. Uh, Ed Escadarian's going to be there. Ed, our favorite buddy, uh, hanging out uh, with Ed. The guy's like 100, I don't know. 90 something <laughs> he's up there um but i wanted to uh, i want to congratulate a couple of people this is pretty big news over the last uh couple of months we've been doing on facebook uh wagon wars and uh, pitting wagons against each other and uh, our first wagon wars was uh you know grabbing some of the most uh, spectacular wagons uh that you've seen and pitting them against each other and the and I think I think the Buick Caballero is what we what won. It was a '57, if I'm not mistaken. But we just completed Wagon Wars two, 
Uh, and our main winner is watching right now, Mr. Tremaine Johnson, uh, who has uh, Max Grundy's 1960 Chrysler Windsor. One one Wagon Wars. Very excited about that. Uh, so not only does he get a sketch of his wagon for our new 2021 uh, Station Wagons coloring book that's coming out in April. Yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. Second book on wagons because they're that, they're that cool. But his wagon just just going to be on the cover. It's going to be on the cover. I got to get out my gold, my, 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 my solid gold pens to create that. Very excited about that. So Tremaine, congratulations also to Tom Hoffman who uh, got second place. Originally, I was going to send uh, the winner a, a signed book and a bunch of stuff, but we got stuff for both you guys. Uh, we got some Hot Wheels coming. Yep, uh-huh, Hot Wheels. Uh, you can't lose with that kind of stuff. But signed books, uh, chocolate, all kinds of neat stuff coming your way. Uh, but uh, you get some bragging rights because this is a pretty, I don't know, it's a pretty big deal for us. Uh, very excited about it. This is our 30... That, that book will, I think, be number 40, our 40th coloring book. Uh, our goal is to create 100 coloring books, hitting uh, every, every automotive walk of life. Uh, so far, so good. Right now, I'm currently starting, literally today, I'm starting the official Sid Mead coloring book. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with Sid, he was a, uh, just passed away recently, he was uh, my mentor, amazing guy. Uh, designer of Blade Runner and Tron and all those vehicles. Just uh, amazing, amazing person. So uh, I got together with the Sid Estate and we're doing the official Sid Mead coloring book next. We just finished Gene Winfield, which is available on Amazon now. And uh, we're doing Dennis Gage after Sid and then Superfly Autos. It's crazy. And then we're going to do the wagon, the wagon book. Uh, and we got Cadillac coming. We got Volkswagen bugs. We got all kinds of neat stuff that's coming. But Especially big thanks, big congratulations, everybody. Get a, a thumbs up to Tremaine and his amazing wagon, the 60 Windsor. Uh, just a gorgeous wagon. Uh, will be emblazoned on the cover of the next Station Wagons coloring book. Uh, very excited. Um, also, uh, if you have purchased the Tony Dow coloring book, uh, my friend Tony Dow, uh, those books have gone out. And uh, not only uh, do you get, um, oh, no, this is the, the coloring contest. Sorry, the coloring contest. If you won the coloring contest, you got a signed photo of Tony. Check that out. That's pretty funny. <laughs> He's such a stud. Uh, so funny. Uh, so he signs some of those, and you'll be getting um, those books also, which is really cool. Uh, we had Muscles and Mojo yesterday at our museum, the Murphy Auto Museum up in Oxnard. A great show, really great show. Thanks to everybody who, who came, and it was great to see uh, Valerie and Brad. They took a 1960 Jaguar out for a spin for the day, went up to Santa Barbara. I yet to hear about their adventures. They even took some great Poupon with them. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And uh, I'm going back to the Murphy on Wednesday. We're only open on the weekends, but on Wednesday, we're going to be doing some painting and some retrofitting and stuff. So if you're, you got nothing to do and you, you're in the Oxnard area and want to stop by, come sign, by and say hi. Sounds great. And then we have, lastly, before we get into our talk, lastly, we have a new event that we're doing at the Malibu Pier. We're going to be taking over the pier with seven of the most incredible cars on the planet. I would, Tremaine, I would put your wagon there. I think you're in Colorado or something, so that would be a little bit tough. It'd be a hell of a drive. Uh, but we do have some incredible cars from Magnuson, from uh, Johnny Martinez, incredible pinstriper, uh, Ken Bella, Wicked Customs, Stuart Wilson, who is... Um, uh, Bruce Willis's uh, stunt double. Uh, it's got an amazing Lincoln. So these cars, uh, seven of these cars are going to be going on the Malibu Pier on December 5th. And we're going to have an all-day event. All day. Next day will be Muscles and Mojo. So all kinds of neat stuff. A free Hot Wheels for the kids, which is pretty much everybody because everybody's a kid. So everybody gets a Hot Wheels. Let's get in today's art talk, how to choose to create the best effect. Uh, as an artist, um, as we know, and if you guys have watched our talk in the past, you know, my goal is to simply help you guys to be creatively powerful and strong uh, in your areas. I don't care if you want to create a burger, if you're trying to create a business plan, if you're trying to create uh, your next build. Um, oh, these things can can manifest in a variety of ways, but if you want them to manifest successfully, it helps to understand the concept of cause and effect. A cause is simply something that you instigate, and the effect is uh, people's reaction. So let's say if I were to, to be driving along and, and someone uh, cuts me off, that's a cause, right? And my reaction to that, that situation is going to be the effect. Now, what we don't understand is that most people 
the effect for most people is an emotional effect and they just respond um, uh, haphazardly, just very quick. They don't choose what they want their reaction to be, they simply react. And the result from that can be a whole host of things. It can be a, a lot of things that aren't necessarily good. And those things can affect your life in a very big way. As an example, if uh, I watched a bounty hunter show the other day, uh, Patty Mayo, uh, it's hysterical to watch sometimes, but criminals, not so smart. You know, it's just the way they do things. But if you're a criminal and you get pulled over because you got expired tags, don't be an a-hole to the cops. Don't be a, don't be a complete dope. Uh, because then you get taken away for a variety of other things. They find out who you are, and then you go back to prison. It's not not too smart. So if you want to be smart about your reactions, then you simply have to ask yourself this one question. And as an artist, as a creative person, it's important to remind yourself, as Buddha said, remember to remember. And you have to remember to ask yourself, how do I want to react to these things? So if something negative happens in your life, let's say you, you do a piece of art or you create something and you give it to the client and a client's reaction isn't what you expected, uh, you can take it personally. You know, we're living in the age of offension right now. I don't even know if that's a word. But the point is, everybody's offended for, for all kinds of things. Trump says something you don't like, Trump says something that you like. Uh, Biden says something you don't like, Biden says something that you don't like. Did I say it right? I don't know. It, it, regardless of who you vote for, you know, you should vote for who you think is the best person. That's that's it, right? And nobody should criticize you for who you vote for. Just vote for who you want. The important thing is that you vote. But if if somebody says something like you're wrong for voting for that person or you're wrong for doing it that way, that's really not not the issue. The issue isn't the fact that someone's pointing their finger and they're criticizing you. The issue your challenge as a creative person, and we are all creative, we are all creative in every way possible. If you can make dinner or a salad, you're a creative person. If you can, if you can draw something or take pictures of something or, or, or uh, um, uh, build a business you know, and become a billionaire, whatever it is that you do, we are creative beings. And this is what we're meant to do. We're meant to create. But we want to be efficient, right? So if, if someone says something to you and you don't like it, or you are... Or, or, if someone says something negative to you, you have to remember that you have a choice as to how you want to respond to that negativity. And that response is the vibration that you are going to give back to the vibration that's coming to you, right? So if someone says, criticizes something to, uh, to you, it's a, a very low negative vibration. And your choice can be to drop yourself into that low vibration and just let them have it, you know? Boom, give it right back to them, right? But you have to understand the consequences for that action. Is that in the same way that he criticized you, you're going to give it back to him. He's going to give it right back to you and it's going to escalate. And these are, this is how, how arguments start. This is how neighbors get into fights. This is how um, uh, governors battle each other. This is how states uh, say we're better than you. And this is how governments get into fights. And this is how wars start. It's no different. It doesn't matter. It's just the size of something doesn't really matter. The point is that we are reacting in ways that are not to our best service. So it's, what's important to remember is that you can change the vibration at any time, but you have to remember to do so. As a creative person, it's pretty cool. So you, you can be creative as to how you respond to something in order to, to lock in what you want to get. So you have to ask yourself, what is it that I want out of this, this situation? Right. If someone comes up to, uh, like, let's say, uh, Tremaine's got his wagon. Right. It's really cool, super cool. But not everybody thinks so. Every, some people wanted the Ford to win. Right. Some people just posted Buick. Right. I'm like, there's no Buick here. And he goes, I like Buick best. Screw these other two. Right. If you take that as being some kind of criticism, they don't like your wagon. Uh, the problem isn't that they said that. The problem is a potential problem is how you react and how you respond to that thing. But you have to understand the highest level of, of vibration is love. That's the highest level of vibration. And when you vibrate love and you vibrate giving and you vibrate understanding and compassion, then you think and respond in these ways. And when someone criticizes you, you don't give them criticism back. You understand where they're coming from and you ask yourself, what is it that I want out of this? And the best thing is always, and, and the Bible talks about this. I'm not a religious person. 
but the Bible talks about this, and I believe that the Bible is a book of science. When, when, when Jesus talks about turning the other cheek, he's not talking about physically turning the other cheek. He is, but what he's talking about, really, is he's saying, don't give your attention to negativity. Don't give your attention to criticism. Don't give your attention to people that feel differently than you. Allow them to be that way. Allow them to be that way. And then get busy getting shit done. Did you see how that just fell right in the pocket? Was that awesome? It doesn't happen every time. Sometimes it's like, hello, you know, or rarely do I do it. But when it's important, when it's important, when I'm trying to make a point and you guys get it, see, didn't work that time. Yep. We're here to get shit done. We're here to get shit done. And it's hard to get shit done when people are getting in your way, right? No, it's not really about that. It's not people people getting in your way. There's always going to be people doing stupid things, right? The point is that if you allow them to bother or you allow them to, to destroy your peace or you allow them to push you off the rails, that's on you, man. That's on you. That's not on them. That's on you. You're making a choice in that fraction of a second to allow those people to bother you when they say, oh, you're not spending enough time with me. Or you're not, uh, you're not uh, being nice to me. Blah, blah, blah. What, whatever it is, people are going to be offended for all kinds of things. There's nothing that you can do about that. But there is something you can do about how you respond. And that's important. Okay? So in the moment, in the present moment, is the only place that choices are made. Choices are not made tomorrow. And they certainly weren't made yesterday. Doesn't make any difference. A choice is made right now, right here. My choice is to speak to you guys and to try to give you something of value so that you can go out into the world and you can kick some ass, you know, creatively speaking, so that you can make your dreams come true, so you can fly to the Bahamas if you want to, or you can go uh, uh, buy that wagon that you like, or you buy that, that custom truck that you want, or you, you get married to that person that you love. You know, whatever it is that you want to create for yourself, you have to keep your eye on the ball and not get distracted. And there it is, people. You hear that? If you heard something, you're a kook because there wasn't any sound. I didn't throw in any sound or anything like that. Uh, my point is, distraction is one of the greatest disservices, one of the greatest challenges as a human being, being distracted from, from the, the end all, the game, the, the focus. Imagine the, the Dodgers wouldn't have won if they were constantly being distracted by um, ducks walking across the field. I don't know why I used duck as, a, as an example. I could have used a, a, a bull weevil or something like that. That's not the point. You're getting distracted. Ducks, uh, chinchillas. If you, imagine, there was like 50 chinchillas that were, I don't even know what the hell a chinchilla is, but they're running across the field. They can't win the game or the, or the, the World Series if chinchillas are getting in the way, right? I'd like to have a Dodger hat that has a little chinchilla on it. That'd be kind of cool. Right? Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Don't allow distractions. Don't allow uh, family to distract you from, from your goal of having a, a wonderful life, an amazing life, a kick-ass life, a life where you get shit done, a life where you feel good. Right? Because the ultimate goal, people, the ultimate goal is to do everything we can on a daily basis as creative people to feel good. And the only way the only way, the fastest way to feel good is by helping others feel good. That's it. That's it. You want to make more money? Help other people make more money. You want to expand your life and, and have more love into your life? You can't get loved if you don't give it first. You got to put goodness into the world. You got to put coolness into the world. And when you put coolness into the world, then coolness comes back to you. It's that simple. It's not a complex thing, right? Not so easy to do. As we've said countless times here on Art Talk, Facebook Live, we do it every 8 a.m. every Monday. Come and join us. Hang out with us on Facebook Live at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I don't know what time it is wherever you are, but it's 8 a.m. here. Time change. I screwed that up yesterday. I got up at 3.30. I think I got up at 3.30 today, too. I don't know what the hell's going on. Don't be swayed by criticism. You know, believe in yourself. Stick to your guns. Do what you know is best for you. Vote for who you feel is the right person for you. And the right person will become president in the right way. 
you know, we, we got to do the best we can. But, you know, regardless of who the president is, it shouldn't affect how cool your life is. Your life can be cool, can be filled with all kinds of cool stuff. I think Tom's going to like this Ford wagon. Pretty badass, I think. I'm looking for a Chrysler, Tremaine, but I can't find one right now. But I'm, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. Um, focus. Give coolness. Want the best. Keep your thoughts, your words, and your actions the best. All right? That's what I got for you today on our talk. Be sure to subscribe at uh, FireballTim.com. we got all kinds of kick-ass stuff happening. Amazing uh, 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 coloring books that are coming down the pike. Amazing cars. Incredible cars. Incredible people. Um, we want to do everything we can to keep car culture alive in a really really big way. I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. Uh, books are available on Amazon. We're heading over to uh, the Sid Mead book. That's what's going to be happening. I hope you guys have a spectacular day. Once again, big congratulations to Tremaine Johnson for winning Wagon Wars and for Tom Hoffman coming in a close second. It was a, it was a tight race. Both you guys are freaking awesome. Your wagons are spectacular. And, um, uh, and, and we may be doing it again. We may be doing it again. All right. Have a spectacular day and week this week, guys. Make it happen. Seriously, make it happen.